The following presentation is brought to you as a courtesy from Forex Academy. This is part of our service, Live Beginners Course. If you find it interesting and wish to be updated on new releases, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or join our community at forex.academy and receive all our services for free. Your like is also highly appreciated. Enjoy. So that might answer that question. So what are we looking to trade? Well, we've seen sterling weakness just in the short term now. Something may have happened there just um, at um, half past the hour there. So again, when you when you react to these, these news flows, that'll be something you'll look to trade. Okay. But this is simply what we're able to see across these markets. So let's just uh, zoom across um, and consult some of the lessons here as well. Now, we've seen a lot of volatility there recently because we had, of course, um, relative price action with um, FOMC, which is the um, the Federal Reserve changing interest rates there last night. Our discussion on it, sorry, they didn't actually change interest rates. But this is effectively how we look to trade these markets, guys. So let's consult some of the analysis we learned there in lesson two when we discussed the Japanese candlestick. Well, what is, what is price action? What is... Um, really we define it as a battle you know a battlefield between buyers and sellers simply that is all it is okay so how would we look to trade how would we look to get involved even um, as a beginner in these markets to assess opportunities well if you recall we learned everything about japanese candlesticks and what they tell us and what signals they provide us so i've just opened here the australian us dollar is there something that we can see potentially in this market in terms of how we could have traded this market. But of course, what we see is, let's just do some early analysis on this trade, ask and answer that question. Well, the market was clearly trading up, okay? It was clearly trading up to the upside. Then we've seen it just start to roll over. Is there any clue to give us where this mark, you know, where the market could trade? Of course, I would argue it's this candle here. With lesson two, we, we discussed the engulfing bearish candle now what is the engulfing candle well it's simply a large candle that completely engulfs the previous price action okay so within this move to the upside it took uh, potentially you know one two three four five six candles to get up to that level if we forgo this one actually then we're at this level here effectively this candlestick completely outdid all of the candles um, to the to the left of it so that is very significant in, in just trading Japanese candlesticks because it's a large move. It closes, it opens at the high, high and trades the whole way down to new lows and closes at the low. That tells us that, well, there's a potential move here. Again, we're observing daily candlesticks. So within this day, something significant has happened or Australian US dollar. It is now looking to come become bearish. And if there's an overall trend, we can argue that this, of course, gives us the signal to trade to the downside. So again, that's an opportunity for us, guys, that we've just assessed. Again, this was in lesson two. So, you know, through our revision of Japanese candlesticks, we can actually make a single trade off that analysis. Now, the question for you is, would you like to trade this for four days or five days? Because that's what you see. You could look to trade this down to the downside here. You know to actually capture this sort of move again you could move your stop loss to relative highs and you'd be able to capture in a good bit of profit there or the question again is do you see this is very significant a move to actually look to trade this in the long term if that's the case you can still make the same analysis and of course the market is here right now it doesn't come back it forms a new trend this candlestick forms a new trend to the downside Again, what we discussed is that, look, markets never trade in a straight line, very rarely. Even you could argue this was quite a structured trend to the upside. But again, you have to speculate on price. So this market here, as it trades, it actually creates signals with us the whole time. We have our spinning top rejection candle. We have, of course, our um, rejection um bullish hammer candle or inverted hammer sorry we have again an inverted hammer 
we have a rejection candle here and what this creates guys is a series of lower highs to signal that this market it simply wants to trade to the downside okay so that's how we look for opportunities in the markets simply by judging price action again now of course as we develop on our technical skills and technical analysis we will look to a compound our probabilities okay so we may look to include now this is you know going to be discussed throughout next week's but i'll just include some of it for now we can just include some of our our lines or technical lines and what we call price channels as well again we see the series of higher lows so when we see something like that if we're not making the trade based off this japanese candlestick well potentially we want to sell here and here and here because it conforms to our you know even if we have these levels here quite consistent then we know that if it look what happens if it comes back up to this level well i'm going to sell based on this channel and of course the uh, japanese candlestick right here so this is how we technically can get involved in the in these markets of course and there's a whole range of different attributes that you yourself as an individual trader will be able to uh, apply to the markets okay so one of the questions that we did ask again um, throughout the first three lessons is well how do we develop that bias you know how do we know in which direction to train to trade and of course it's it's more often than not it can be quite simple in the markets you know so this is a good example here we have the new zealand us dollar at the moment okay now sometimes some markets the, the decision will be much easier and that is a very valid point and and it's it's a difficult pursuit to, to to trade the markets you know with your skills so knowing that is part and parcel it's half the battle now one example i would like to give is is just this and the reason why is because there's no consistent um, long-term price view and that's fine we can still profit we can still come back to our question where is the opportunity well at this moment in time the opportunity is potentially looking to buy and um, whether it's a level or whether it's the candlesticks you know so we can look at this candlestick and say hmm that's a buy that's certainly a buy i'm looking to buy this candlestick and put my stop loss right here at the low well if that's the case well you're certainly going to follow this price action up to new highs so that's a very simple trade if we're looking to see this as a rejection candlestick right here well the next time the price action comes back up we might look to sell and effectively through our study of japanese candlestick well that is our signal that is our signal to sell this candlestick of course that's a sell signal and price action moves to the downside so you know some very simple opportunities and actually just looking at the price action again and actually identifying opportunities this is the, there's no secret to it really is the point i'm making and um, you know once we develop the skills needed we can get involved heavily in actually looking to take short-term opportunities and then guys then when we when we see something that, that confirms to us well uh, you know when we ask the question how do we know which direction to trade well certainly now we know or have a bias in which direction to trade because well this here is something more significant in terms of defining direction like we all see that isn't that quite clear so do we want to become buyers or sellers in this market in the new zealand us dollar now of course we want to become uh, buyers uh, or sorry we want to become sellers in this market but it's always in relation to the time frame that you're deciding to trade okay so i'll give you one example here we are seeing a very uh, downtrend in, new in the new zealand us dollar but of course if you're considerate of, of you know trading price action you know you might look to to trade more actively you know and we, we of course have many active traders here for us can that do so very well indeed how might you do this well of course it's it's all the same it's all relative you're looking at price action okay so you see um a lot of volatility again that was as a result of our fomc volatility last night so a huge announcement to the markets um, however you see little price structures like this just not breaking lows then you see our japanese candlesticks hmm how do we trade this look at this candles these candles here don't give us anything to trade a lot of less volatility when does volatility come back into the market well it's our good old friend our bullish engulfing candlestick 
So you see this so many times. Again, this is 15 uh, minute price action. So you know, this is a clear signal to say, well, this market may want to trade up to the upside. And that's effectively what we'll do. When that candle closes, we'll say, well, that's our signal. That's our signal right there. Let's buy the top of this candlestick. We could effectively put our stop loss below the level. And, and that's, our, that's our risk inherent. Okay. And we just let the market run. And that's effectively what may what may happen for some of these trades. We see this market trade, albeit with some volatility, to the upside. We're getting continued momentum in our New Zealand dollar. Okay, so a market that is quite weak, if we if we assess it to, to bottom out, or if we think it, it's a value trade and we can try and just get a short-term trade for a bounce, there's of course pips in that. And that would have been, let me see, that's a that's a 26 pip winner, uh, just from high to low there from where we are now. It's a fantastic trade. So again, it's all in your asset your ascertaining you know how you'd like to trade these markets and again look i've been trading the markets for a long time some of this analysis might might think wow he's he's able to implement um, good trades here but it's it all comes quite natural to you effectively when you become more experienced in these markets so i very much encourage you to get involved in in your demo trading and and you know try and observe the markets to get some trades off so let's move through a couple of markets here and just uh, you know see what what the price action has done of course here again answers the question for us you know this is the dollar against the swiss franc how how would we like to trade this would we like to become buyers in this market <laughs> that's absolutely the case um we want to become buyers in this market because well it seems to be a very easy trade indeed doesn't it so there are easier trades out there in the market this is moving up 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 and away so again if we just simply see this as a break of, of a level or something, whatever our analysis tells us, guys, all we need to do is, is react to what's happening and look to trade this. So one of the um, one of the, the lessons or one of the, the main topics, the practical elements to trading that we discussed again was volatility, guys. So in this market here, we're effectively not seeing a lot of volatility over the long term. So this might give you one example to express to you guys. Um, you know, for those of you who, are, who have a little fear for the markets or for those of you who are unsure when you'd like to enter the markets, financial trading doesn't have to be the, the most riskiest of, of riskiest of um, activities for you. And that's a point I would like to trade. Um, I'll be quite honest with you guys. Some of the guys here in the office... Um, I suppose make some jokes, uh, you know, like, towards me sometimes because I, I'm not a risky trader. Now, of course, I take risk when it's due, but I don't take outlandish risks in trading these markets. And this is a trade that uh, I've looked at and, and made some some profit off because it all boils down to our assessment of the markets. Um, if you recall, we discussed volatility across different markets and we looked at some price action charts during the lessons. So this market here. The range of these candlesticks, these are all days. So we're looking at daily price action here. So this was our technical level here defined at 97. And the market traded up and closed. So for me, I seen, well, there's not there's not a lot of volatility in uh, in these in this market particularly. It's trading uh, very structured to the upside. We've broken just a level here. Um, so what I might like to do is simply trade this candlestick. A very simple trade. So to buy a break of, of the level was right at this candlestick here. We got the break above this this high and the stop loss above the last corrective low. Just to, oh, sorry, below the last corrective low. So my point is, guys, that you don't have to ascertain or get involved in risky trades. You know, you can trade smaller trade size. You can look at the ATR or the average true range, which we'll be discussing in, in various lessons. To actually discuss um, uh, and have an idea to the risk involved in trading. Now you can see that this is quite calm of a market, um, albeit it's a very well structured trend. Yes, I get that, but the volatility, guys, is what's important. It's just trading up maybe 20 pips a day. Can we see that? And some days it's trading up maybe 10, 10 pips. So this was a level of comfort to me that. I don't want to assess volatility too much. I want to trade a market that isn't showing volatility, albeit it's pulling back today, but it's 
pulling it back very lightly. You know, from high to low, it's it's maybe 20 pips again. So you don't always have to think, well, how can I make, make money in the riskiest trade? That is not financial trading. It's look for those best trades that offer profit opportunities for the less risk. So that is one point I'd really like to hit home to reiterate with, with our traders, particularly on, on a beginner's trading course, is that your assessment of risk um, is absolutely crucial, but also the fact that there is risk inherent in the markets. You can look for markets that have much, much less risk. And if you prefer to trade those asset classes, by all means, simply trade less riskier assets. Um, I'll give you uh, one example here. What we look to do again is um, look at a, a familiar chart. Now I'll go to my market watch here. I'll simply scroll down to uh, the cryptocurrencies. Uh, now, again, it all depends on your trading style because I know some of my uh, colleagues are trading the Bitcoin market very well and making a lot of money in the, in the market. So it all relates to your appreciation of volatility as well. So what I'll do is simply zoom out on this market. This is our Bitcoin market. And you can see, we just have some analysis in there. You can see the amount of volatility over the long term in the Bitcoin market here, guys. You can see the large move there, December. Does everyone remember in December, this market moved up to 20,000 US dollars and then it retraced. But you can see guys, it, it's, it you know, the volatility is certainly there. And as we zoom in on, on relative price action, you, you can see how it trades. You know, it is quite a volatile market. Um, a lot of traders do trade a smaller trade size and allow them to profit in the volatility because the small, uh, level of risk in trade size they take allows them uh, for large profit objectives. Okay, so you can see when there's a move in the market, it can just um, literally go in quite a quick fashion. You know, now this is one minute, uh, sorry, this is five minute price action shorting. You can see the movement of price can just jump, you know, quite consistently just jump. Um, so that's another level of volatility. To give you an example of a market that is quite volatile, again, it all depends on what asset you like to trade as well. So let's move in and observe our UK FTSE 100. So this is the uh, the FTSE 100, guys. This is the market for the FTSE. We've seen the um, equity markets really sell off there in February. They're starting to retrace there in Europe and in the UK here. So for those equity investors that are, are have an ear to the equity markets and understand fundamentally what's happening in the economy, um, and for technical traders as well, this is something that we like to trade, of course, because we can identify trading opportunities. So what I'd like to do just before we finish off our, our practical demo lesson is go through some trades and we'll we'll choose the FTSE 100 to trade. Now, in structuring this trade, what I would like to focus the, this practical exercise is on leverage or risk, okay? So if you do remember, and we can refer to the lesson, we defined leverage in lesson uh, three as um, risk, as the multiplication factor of risk. So what I'm going to do now is place three trades in the same asset. Actually, what I'll choose is I will choose a currency pair, a favorable currency pair to trade. So we'll go back to uh, potentially the euro pound, okay? Or well, the pound, the pound's seen some volatility, volatility there in the short term. So. Yeah, let's let's look at the pound here across different time frames. 15 minutes. Yeah, and we'll look to trade the pound then, the euro against the pound. Okay, so we're going to trade 15 minute price action chart. And what I'd like to do is to sh show you the leverage effect with three different trades, okay? The first, I'm going to simply place an order again with our um with our volume at 0 0.01. So we'll just execute that at market. So we can see how cheap the trade is. For, first of all, it's, it's extremely cheap in terms of the market and the commission, four cents. That's, that's the transaction cost, um, which is very, very cheap to trade a market. I mean, four cents. You can see how you can place uh, 100 trades and it's, you know, it's gonna cost you such a little amount of, of capital. And um, of course, that's a very cheap market to trade. And you can see the profit as, as we move. So we, we chose a 0 0.01. What does that relate to guys? Okay, so in terms of risk, what does that relate to? So what I'll do is we'll just really make this quite an interactive lesson here. Just draw a little 
uh, box here that we can maybe um so our 0 0.01 that relates to our notional value and again we are trading at euro against the pound so it's effectively euro and it's 1000 euros so let's pretend i literally have 1000 euros of cash of capital okay cash in my hand and i go to the bank and i'm thinking hmm i think this exchange rate is going to increase so i'm going to wait to actually change my 1000 euros maybe in the next 20 minutes and um, to to reflect a higher exchange rate against the pound sterling okay that's effectively what we're trading and as, as you can see that's reflective in the profit target here as the market trades, it's, it's trading up in and around a 10 cent per pip there. So that's absolutely fine. And we're able to make five, five euros here, 10 euros there, 20 euros there, uh, depending on the time frame that we're trading in. Now what I'll do is take some, uh, maybe I, I view this as a very good trade. What I'd like to do is take on more leverage, okay? So we'll effectively trade a new order and we'll just move this out of, out of sight. We'll trade a 0 0.05. Okay, so we're going to trade a 0 0.05 a lot in this market and we're going to buy by market again. We effectively make what is the same trade? We're effectively long the market in and around the same price, but this time we have taken a 0 0.05 trade. Okay, what does that refer to in terms of notional trade size? Of course, it's simply the multiplication factor. So we have a 0 0.05. Again, that's simply 5,000 euros against the pound. Okay, so that, that's simply all that means, guys. It means that we have 5,000 euros cash trading against the pound sterling as the exchange rate fluctuates. And this is all this is. This movement of price here is the, the exchange rate fluctuating. That's all it is and then as you can see so what i'll do is just remove some of this um annotation here on screen we're effectively in two trading positions here 0 0.05 and 0 0.01 that's reflected in our terminal here and as the market moves you can see that um we had a little more uh, commission of course just because it's the multiplication factor but that's um, with the objective of making much more profit on the trade, of course, and that's going to be the case. You can see that the profit as the market moves is exponential. Okay, so the profit is exponential. So if this market moves to the upside, we hope that we'll capture more profit for greater risk, for greater trade size that we're taking. Effectively, now we have 6,000 euros against the pound. Now what I'll do, guys, is place yet another trade. And this time... I'm going to be a little eager to make money in this market. I'm going to go to my new order and I'm going to buy the market again with a 0 0.25. Again, I'm going to buy this market at price, roughly around the same price our first order implemented the market. You can see I'm fairly, fairly confident in this trade. Now I'm taking 0 0.25, so that's um, 25,000 euros of capital that I do not have. You can see, which is fine. That's by the way. That's that's what we look to do as leverage. You can see that effectively my balance here on the demo account is seven thousand dollars, just over. But now I'm trading. I'm trading not only twenty five thousand euros of capital with my zero point two five lot. Again, is our twenty five thousand euros, and we're long effectively a zero point five as well and a 0 0.01 okay so effectively we are i'm sorry that's uh 5000 euros to the good and our 1000 so i do apologize for the, the scribbles here but you know just quite rough there effectively we're long uh you know at 31000 total of actual capital now that will be reflected of course in the overall portfolio that we have here this is effectively what we're seeing here. This is the profit target. So hopefully this market is just trading. It's going to show us, um, you know, as the market moves, you can see now that it's starting to trade to the upside. We've seen a very strong move just in this market to the upside relatively. And the fact that the market pulled back, 
perhaps in the short term, give us an opportunity just to get involved in trading this market to the upside. Okay, so a very simple technical analysis, of course, it's just to show you this leverage effect here. This is effectively the leverage effect. What I'll do is just highlight this in a little more detail so we can all see. This is how we look to profit in this, these markets, guys. So again, we take a 0 0.01 trade. What we're going to see is the leverage effect that as this market moves and trades up per pip, it's moving at one cent per pip. So that's great. That's We can look for larger profits, of course, um, and I'm just trading shorter time frames here to try and capture some movement we can see that we have our 0 0.05 trade which effectively is giving us a 1.43 profit of, of us dollars my account is in dollars here and we can see that the full um trade of the euro pound at 25 or 0 0.25 is effectively giving us a much greater return because we've taken much more capital in this trade in this specific trade okay and that's how we look to invest properly when when the time calls for it when we use our technical analysis when the odds stack in our favor we may like to take a one percent trade of our capital we may like to take a two percent trade we may of course like to take three percent trade you know so it's all relative to you know monetizing your risk to trading with different trade lots of course uh, suitable to you and to try and use what you've learned already in the first few lessons we learned you know technical analysis albeit in some detail we learned a lot about the japanese candlestick structure again so as we zoom in on this price action we can see that this was an engulfing candle in the five minute chart it was a huge candle an absolutely huge candle in the, the five minute chart but for whatever reason it just pulled back just the volatility pulled back again it started to settle it just started to settle here so a large volatility move to the upside a bit of a retracement okay the market trades down what is significant that this is rejecting again and uh, to be to be a bearish signal here is a little indecisive and then we get our, our spinning top so we see this just start to roll over to the upside we may even see this start to trade way way up and, and that could be the course of today's price action we just don't know it's just a technical setup we used you know the analysis of what we've learned in lesson two and three with japanese candlesticks with trading leverage different trade sizes volatility can you see how it's all starting to come together guys it's all starting to come together in terms of trading these markets so what we'll do to finish off the lesson of course is to actively look to take profit in these markets so again with a very small trade size of 0.1 we take uh, something like 40 a 45 cent winner we take a three euro winner and a 10 euro winner there so effectively nothing too serious of course trading different trade size we take a few winners there maybe 20 euros just under or 20 dollars so that's how you look to enter these markets guys that's how you look to observe leverage observe volatility observe different candlesticks observe different markets here on the market watch here you can simply go into a market I want to trade perhaps the German 30, which is the German DAX. Simply drag that over. There's the price action for today's German DAX. Okay, so that's all we do. We, we analyze these markets as they trade. We get involved. We keep our risks succinct. We get more experience and knowledge about the markets. We identify market sentiment. We trend with bias with the trend. Uh, we look to establish our um, ideas across the markets. And again, guys, the more experience that you get both uh, at, a, at a retail level with your education and the more experience that you have practically looking at, at the JFX demo trading platform or your live account, uh, getting involved, making a few pips, a few five euros, 10 euros here before developing your consistency. That's what it's all about, guys, when we look to push on and, and make profits in these markets. So I hope you're enjoying this experience so far. I hope you enjoyed the first week of our, our beginner trading course and that practical exercise as well. So that brings us on just to conclude our webinar, of course. What did we what did we get from this webinar? Well, we now understand the practical elements to trading. So I hope that's the case. We understand the practical elements to trading. And now that we've seen not only you know the japanese candlestick walk through through the powerpoint presentations but actually practically view them 
as they move. Isn't that a great exercise to actually apply? And then we gain an understanding of the MT4 trading platform. So the different markets that we can look at, the different analysis that we can use, and, and how to actually involve in um, trading with different risk. Okay, so very interesting stuff there. The next webinar, of course, will be Monday's webinar, which I look forward to, of course. Webinar five, the trading toolkit, guys. And this is where we'll start to get really interesting because we look at technical analysis in theory. So the theory of technical analysis and price study. And then we put that into practice, okay? So, of course, we like to, we are all traders here at Forex Academy. We, we don't just do the education. We get heavily involved in these markets. And the fact that we have the practical experience, we can deliver that to you as well. So, you know, it's a great uh, process that you can uh, take in the theory, establish your understanding of markets, but then put that to practice and hopefully make some money out there in the markets as well. So that concludes our webinar. I'll let you go for, uh, for today. I do enjoy, of course, uh, your weekend. I'll be back on Monday with Lesson 5 of the Beginner's Trading Course. Until then, thanks for joining us here at Forex.academy. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.